Hey everybody, this is Robert Burke and welcome to episode number 13 of When to Play. On today's episode, we are going to talk about a game called Dixit. And as you can see by the big award, the big red award over here, this was the Spiel de Jahres winner of 2010. So a game that wins that award, it's a very prestigious board gaming award in Germany. A country where board gaming has been elevated to a different level than here in the United States, although we are gaining ground. Uh, that award is big. That award means that your game will sell hundreds of thousands of copies, if not millions of copies. And uh, so, is Dixit worth such a prestigious award? That's the question I'm going to hope to answer for you. Not whether it's a good game or not, because I think, as you know, I believe that no game is good for everybody. And I also believe that there is no game that is not good for somebody. So I'm going to try to help you understand whether Dixit is a game that will fit you, your game group, or your family. So let's talk, as usual, let's talk about the artwork first. So... The artwork is, is Dixit. Uh, artwork is the key aspect that makes Dixit a great game. It comes with a whole bunch of these surreal uh, cards uh, painted, they're paintings, and every one of them is very unique, and they're very surreal. Some of them are very odd, and you... They're, they spur your imagination, right? So you look at these images, every one of them, and you figure out, okay, what is going on here? We've got a stack of coins, and we've got two ants on top of these coins, and they are sword fighting. What is it? What does it mean? So it's all in the eye of the beholder. It takes surreal artwork and turns it into a game, which is very, very unique concept and it works very well. Uh, the components, this game I only got, I've had it about a year, um, and you can see the corners already ripped open here. The box is pretty thin, so not the highest quality. The cards are okay, they're nice big jumbo cards. They're not linen finished, they're thick enough, but they're not as high quality as I would like to see, but the game is not that expensive either. Right, I think you get it for $24 maybe, maybe less than that. $20 maybe you can find a, a copy online. Uh, so it's not that expensive of a game. Um, the score track is neat. The scoring track is inside the box so you don't have to take it out. And you've got little rabbits, little rabbit pawns that will hop around the score track as you keep score. Then you have little uh, voting tokens here for your color. And that's about it. That's all there is to the game. There's uh, some wooden score markers, the rabbits. There are some uh, voting tokens for each color. There's a score track inside the box. Then other than that, there's a rule book, uh, which it comes in. A, it looks thick, but that's only because there's about a gazillion languages in here. Uh, the English page, or any language page, is only really, it's two pages. The rules are only one, two pages. So depending on what language, you'll find your language in here, and it's uh, two pages worth of rules. But other than that, it's this huge deck of cards, of very unique cards. No numbers. This game is all about creativity. So the bottom line on this game is if you are a creative person, if you are a creative family, if you are a creative game group, if you are not a gamer, but are part of a creative crowd, if you are an artist, a musician, a writer, an actor, especially an actor, then this is a game that you really need to have. If you like party games, this is a great game because it's very simple, a lot of people can play it, and there's a lot of interaction. There's not strategy here. If you're a Euro gamer, this is not a game for you. If you're a war gamer, this is not a game for you. If that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a strategy game, something that takes a lot of thought, uh, this is not for you. This is a quick, simple, 
uh, creative game that's meant to bring people, to get people to communicate and have fun with each other. So if you like that kind of game, this is a great game that you should pick up. Um, I can tell you how to play it very quickly. So on your turn, everybody's going to have a hand of cards, right? So whoever is first is going to play a card to the table. So let's say a uh, player played this card on the table. You'll see it's a, a book with a knight, and there's a hole in the pages, and there's some creature crawling out of the, out of the book. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to play this down, face down. You're not going to show anybody. You're going to pick it, and you're going to play it face down so nobody sees it. And you're going to come up with a word or a phrase or a song or something to describe your card. Now, the key here is you don't want everybody to guess your card. If you do, you will get no points. But also, you don't want, no, if nobody guesses your card, you also get no points. You want just one or two people to guess your card, but not everybody. In that case, you are going to score three points. Everybody who guesses it was your card will also score points. So, if I was going to use this card, I'm going to pick a phrase or a word or, or something. I would not want to say, it's a knight with a spear on a horse on a book with a hole and a monster crawling out of it, right? If I said that, then everybody would know exactly this. When we flip it over, everybody would know that's my card because I've described it to a T. You don't want to do that. You want to be more obtuse. You want to be creative. You want to, especially if you know the other people playing, you want to do little inside references so one person might get it that you really know, but the others might not have any idea. So that's another aspect of this game that is really great, is that you can use the relationships that you have with people um, to help you play this game. But you can get very creative too, especially, I mean, you could even do a sound or a voice. You don't even have to say a word if you don't want to. You could do whatever you want to explain what your, what your card is. So it can get very fun and very creative. Now, the game says it's for three to six people. Honestly, three people, it's not that great of a game, right? You need more people. Hopefully, you'll have five or six people to play this game. If you have five or six, that's where, that, that's where Dixit really shines. But so if this was my if this was the card, let's say somebody played this card and 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 they played it face down so nobody saw it, but they said imagination, right? That would be a good clue. Imagination because it's a book, right? You have to use your imagination. Books can bring stories to life, but you have to use your imagination to bring it to life. Um, so that would be a good clue. If, if somebody played used this card and said imagination, and then I'm going to start to look at my cards. Every other player is going to look at their cards and they're going to play a card face down that they think best matches imagination. Because then people are going to vote on whose card they think uh, the player's was. And if your card gets voted on, you're going to score points for that, even though it wasn't your turn. So you want to go through your deck and find the card that best fits the other player's description. So here's, here's my first card, Imagination. Maybe that's not such a good one. Table Full of Food, that's probably not a good one. This one's pretty good. That, that would be a good one for Imagination, I think, with the rainbow. The deer head with the cat looking at it, maybe. And my last one is this. Now, bingo, that's the one I would play. Right? You've got this uh, figure, he's unlocked his mind, and there's light lights coming out of his head. That says imagination to me. So this would be the card I would play. So after everybody picks a card, they're all going to get flipped over, and you're going to vote on which one you think the starting players was. So again, if everybody votes for the starting players, the starting player gets no points. If nobody does, the starting player gets no points. If everybody that everybody that votes for your card, if you're not the starting player, you're going to get a point. So that's basically it. That's how you play Dixit. You play a card, you give a description, everybody picks a card that they think matches your description, you shuffle them up, 
you turn them over, everybody votes, and then you score the points. And that's Dixit. So if you like casual games, this is a game you're going to love. If you like party games, this is a game you have to have. If you're looking for a good filler at game night, this is a game you should have. If you're a creative person or a part of a creative family or a creative group or in a creative business, this is a great game for you to play. Kids love this game. It opens up their imagination. So play this with your children. My kids love this game. It's great to see their little minds working and to see them coming up with these creative explanations for their cards. If you're a strategy gamer and you don't like to go outside of the strategy game box, then this is not a game for you. Uh, but if you're creative, Dixit is a must-have game.